Hey folks, Steve Lewis here. Welcome to Relevance for Today. Got a special guest on the show all the way from Texas, Dr. John Burpee. Stay tuned, folks. This is going to be a really good one. It's going to be really nice. Okay, folks, special guest on the show. In fact, we're going to do two episodes because this is a mighty man of God. He's got some great nuggets to tell us about. It's going to be really interesting. His name is Dr. John Burpee. And Dr. John was born in Holton, Maine, married to the love of his life, Nancy, also from Maine, in August of 1973. They have two amazing children, Chad and Julie, and five wonderful grandchildren. He served in the U.S. Air Force for nine years which is awesome. John and Nancy have and continue to travel extensively holding healing crusades, leadership conferences, and revival meetings around the world. They reside in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, and oversee Destiny Church and Ministries International. He also travels and ministers through John Burpee Ministries. So without further ado, welcome Dr. John. How you doing, Steve? It's good to uh, be with you today. <laughs> yes, sir. It's good. We've got our iPads and our Rodecaster Pros all hooked up, and we are talking long distance, quite a few miles. So, yeah. I share. To- yes, definitely. I shared a little bit about you, John, and uh, but. People have heard enough of me. This is like episode 140, so I'm going to keep quiet as much as possible. And I would like to basically introduce you to the world. Let us know what you do, what you're all about, and uh, how God's using you. Just take it away. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having me uh, today on your podcast. Uh, really looking forward to this. And uh, so I'll just start uh, where um, even as a teenager— uh, with my life, you know, because, uh, you know, where I'm at today, I, I am a minister. I oversee a, a, a minister's network, mm-hmm. but it all started. It all started when I was a young teenager and my mother used to uh, not really make me, but, you know, when mothers ask you to do something when you're younger, you want to please them. And so uh, she would ask me to go to church with her. And so I think I was about 16 or 17, and I would go to uh, this church in in Charleston, Maine. And, uh, you know, it was powerful. And I saw the Holy Spirit move. Mm. A lot of people's lives were touched. A lot of salvations. Uh, It was absolutely incredible seeing what God was doing. Amen. Uh, But for me, it was not a personal experience. I was there more... uh, on the religious side of things and not on a relationship with Christ. I didn't really understand that at the time. I didn't value that, but there was something that happened during those times as a teenager that really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then it came about a little later on in my life when I made some decisions. But again, going back to that church and watching the power of God and, and, watching people experience healings and miracles and salvation uh, as a young teenager was, was really powerful. But, uh, but again, I didn't make uh, a commitment to Christ at that time. And then that's when, uh, during that time, I met Nancy. And it's kind of funny because when we were dating, I think possibly we might have been engaged at the time, but I told her right up front. I said, you know, when we get married and have kids, we're going to start going to church. Oh, boy. And, you know, that <laughs> comment came out of something I had experienced earlier in my life. Mm-hmm. Wasn't willing to make the commitment but uh, at that time, but somehow I put that in, in my life to do as a later date. I'm not saying that's a good thing to do, but that's what I ended up doing. And so, uh, so we ended up, Nancy and I, we ended up getting married in, in 73, August of 73. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was in the Air Force at that time and stationed out in, in Dover, Delaware. And we did pretty good. You know, we did pretty good first couple of years of our marriage. And then things started going south mm-hmm. and it wasn't good at all. I was basically wanting to live my own life. Nancy was wanting to live her own life. We ended up in the Philippines. Uh, we left we left uh, Dover Air Force Base got stationed in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. And it was a disaster. The first year and a half in the Philippines. I was drinking, 
Uh, even when I'm out preaching, I tell people that uh, years ago I was drinking a case of beer a day. Wow. Uh, now I'm down to a six pack. <laughs> a six pack. <laughs> it's kidding, but. Meaning uh, his stomach. <laughs> right. So, the attention of the people in the church, they look up at me like, how did this guy get behind the back day? So, no, I don't drink at all. And the reason why I don't drink at all is because. Um, doesn't mean I can't have a drink, but I don't want to be a stumbling block to anybody. So I made that choice a long time ago. Right. That especially as a leader, mm -hmm. I want to do everything I can to help people get set free. Amen. And so if they're struggling with alcohol or drugs, they see me dabbling in that. That's not really a good testimony. And, uh, and again, I don't want to be a stumbling block. So. Right. But through all of that, what happened was... Um, we were in some uh, rodeo competition over in the Philippines on a C-130. We did aircraft rodeo competition. We did a high altitude jumps and worked with the Navy SAS and the, and the uh, British and Australian and also with our SEAL team and Special Forces mm -hmm. uh, with our C-130s. And so we took first place in Southeast Asia. Nice. I was stationed in the Philippines. So we ended up getting an opportunity to come to the States to compete. Out of 31 bases, we took third place. Oh, that's then awesome. After that competition, I went home on leave. And, of course, my mother asked me if I would go to church with her. So I did. Mm. And I'll tell you something, Stephen. Um, uh, we don't see this today in our churches like we should. But when I went to church with her, the conviction of the Holy Spirit was so strong. Mm. And um, it wasn't there wasn't a condemning uh uh, message. It wasn't a message just putting a lot of guilt on me. Mm -hmm. But when I went into that church, and I can't remember what that preacher was preaching, but my goodness, I was under so much conviction. I felt like the Holy Spirit was just drawing me. I literally was hanging on to the arms of the chair, wow. trying to keep from going forward to make a decision. Mm. And, uh, uh, but anyway, so what I did was I made a deal with the Lord, and I said, as soon as I get back to the Philippines, I'm going to turn my life over to you, Lord. Amen. And again, that was not a wise decision, but I, that's the decision. Oh, that's I what, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I ended up getting um, stuck in California on my way back to the Philippines for, for seven days. I hooked up with this Navy guy, and we, we just got drunk for seven days, mm. just totally drunk. And I knew that was my last time for drinking because I already prepared in my mind. And again, these are not wise decisions at all. Mm. But I already made a decision in my mind that the first Sunday I get back, I'm turning my life over to Christ. Right. And so we left California. I ended up getting home. And uh, I always bought uh, something nice for Nancy. They were almost like built gifts because I wasn't living for God. Mm -hmm. Wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't the husband that I should be. So I bought her a nice watch. And I so I hand her the watch. She said, I'll, I'll take the watch. But she said, I want a divorce. And I said, well, you know what? You can do whatever you want, but um, I'm going to church this Sunday. I'm going to turn my life over to Christ. Amen. And that kind of blew Nancy away. She was kind of afraid that I was going to get her in church and then go back to living my old lifestyle. Right. But that Sunday, we ended up going to uh, a church right outside Friendship Gate. It was a Assembly of God missionary church. Pastor named Gene Burgess was pastoring there. And... Uh, this guy named Paul Peterson, he was a visiting young uh, intern missionary, and he preached that morning, and his wife had just had a baby. So he preached, but he didn't give an altar call. So we're leaving the church, and he comes up to me, and he goes, so what brought you guys out today? I didn't know anything else, but I just said, look, we came out to get saved, but you didn't give an altar call. <laughs> so so uh, we'll be back tonight. And, and somehow he let us go. And, and he said, as soon as we left, and he didn't know how to contact us or anything, he said he prayed all afternoon that we would come back wow. that night. So we came back that night. Another guy named Rick Shell, who was a missionary for the Assemblies of God, he was preaching. As soon as he got done preaching, Paul jumped up, gave an altar call, <laughs> and then went forward. And we literally, in 1979, we turned our lives over to Christ. Praise and we God. never looked back. Amen. Never looked back. It was powerful. Mm. We got involved in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, started driving a Sunday school bus. We were helping to uh, helping to uh, build a, a new sanctuary, and uh, the sanctuary was pretty good. I used to have this old saying 
that, yeah, if I go to church, the roof's going to fall. Oh, in. yeah. Well, they had no roof. The roof wasn't <laughs> even put on. So, And the water baptistry, Stephen, the water baptistry, it was built, but it wouldn't hold water. And so there were 23 of us that, that ended up getting saved mm-hmm. there in the you know within a few weeks. And um, so we wanted to get baptized, but it, but the water baptistry wouldn't hold water. So one of the guys, of course, back during that time, we were still bringing a lot of bodies back from Vietnam. Mm-hmm. So one of the guys worked in the morgue. And he said, look, I we've got all kinds of metal coffins. Let me bring one of them in. I'll pop the hinges off. We'll fill it up with water. Wow. And so we did. So 23 of us got baptized in a coffin. Metal coffins. You talk about talk about burying the old. Yes. That's what I was And thinking. dying to that life. It yeah. was amazing. Actually, one of the missionaries said to me one time, she goes, you know, John, when that old flesh pops his head up, you just get your hammer out and nail that old coffin lid back down. Amen. And so, uh, but anyway, so those were those were quite the memories. I got really mentored uh, big time while we were over there. But we had made a decision while we were in the Philippines. We were so radically changed. Our marriage was saved. I mean, it was so powerful yeah. that um, the, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me about full-time ministry. And I was like, you know what? Uh I don't think so. I think you, you're picking up the wrong guy, you know. So finally, I just couldn't get away from it. And there were several different confirmations. And so I made a decision to go into full-time ministry. And when we left the Philippines, we got stationed in California mm-hmm. at Travis Air Force Base. was there about a year and a half. Then get out, went to Bible College up in Maine. Uh, faith school of theology, and then went up to Central Bible College and continued to pursue my education even up to now. Mm. Uh, but um, but I'll tell you something. Our marriage changed. It literally changed. And Stephen, this is the thing. When a person turns in their life over to Christ, mm-hmm. I think it's so important to just say right up front, I'm all in. Yes. And, and Lord, you own me. Mm. And that's what Nancy and I did. We gave... We gave the Lord our marriage, our lives, you know, gave him everything. And we made a decision we're never going to look back. And we've never backslidden. We never had a desire to go back to what we left. Mm -hmm. It was powerful. And through that, we ended up growing. We had great mentors around us. But we did a lot of self-study, a lot of searching the scriptures, and, and just yielding, learning how to yield. Yes. And so... We've been married now. Um, it'll be 47 years yes. in August. We've been together. It'll be 50 years in December. Wow. And, uh, man, we love each other. We're a team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nancy and I, we're side by side. Most Probably 85% of the ministry we do, we do it together. And so we're very excited about that. Um I ended up, uh, is there anything you want to ask me right now before I go to the next segment? Here? Well, I do want to make a statement, and that statement okay. is, you know, thank you for being the vessels that you are. And, and hearing your testimony, I know that's going to speak to quite a few viewers because we've all been down the rocky path, and God still can use us. And as yeah. people hear more about your testimony and the lives you've touched, they're going to see how, hey, God can use anybody he chooses. Don't give up. Don't do the enemy's work for him and judge yourself. Allow God to use you. So, no, right. you're you're doing great. I'm enjoying right. listening. So, uh, you know, God can use anybody. Look, mm-hmm. I was a young guy, grew up in Holton, Maine. I picked potatoes. And when it wasn't potato picking season, you know, you pick rocks. <laughs> you get the out of the field so that they can take the harvesters and the diggers through and stuff. So, so I was basically just a young guy growing up in northern Maine, you know, uh, around potatoes and stuff. So God mm-hmm. took a nobody, and I've reached thousands. Nancy and I, yeah. we have been able to reach thousands and thousands of people that are now reaching thousands of people. And so God can use anybody as long as they're willing to yield themselves and allow the Holy Spirit to mold them and shape them into what he wants them to be. Amen. And so, uh, so anyway, we got out of the military, mm-hmm. went to uh, faith school of theology in Charleston, Maine. And um, it was uh, at that time, 
it was very legalistic school. I mean, le- I mean, legalism was it was uh, it was very legalistic. Let me just put it that way. Now, but, John, John, okay. I got a question for you. When you say that, um, for some of our viewers viewers that might not know what you mean, what do you mean okay. by that? Well, there was a lot of standards on the outside. Men couldn't have a beard. Oh, wow. Women were not allowed to wear pants. They okay. were not allowed to wear makeup. Gotcha. Uh, that, uh, that type of legalism. Okay. Out- outward appearance type yep. stuff. Now, that doesn't happen now. Mm-hmm. But through all of that, the Holy Spirit just moved in powerful ways. I had major encounters with the Holy Spirit. And my first week, actually, my first week of Bible school, what I what I was doing on the weekends, I was working on a dairy farm mm-hmm. because um, one of my things I did before I went into military, I was a licensed livestock dealer. So I used to buy and sell cattle oh, wow. uh, from the farmers. I was around, you know, milking cattle, bulls, but any kind of animals that you could buy and sell. Mm-hmm. So I was around all of that. So I figured, well, this is a good way to make money while I'm going to Bible school. So I ended up working on this dairy farm over in Sebec, Maine. And uh, my first week of working on that farm, uh, we were milking, like, I think 275 head of cattle oh, twice wow. a day. Wow. And so it was a lot of work. And so what happened was um, while I was working there, we had, uh, we had some cows that had mastitis. They had, basically, they had a disease in... Uh, in their udder, so uh, so you had to medicate them. Mm-hmm. So you had to separate this group of cows from the rest of them in milkings because you couldn't use any of the milk because there was medicine okay. in the cows. So, so I was going out to bring the mastitis herd in. It was probably about 30, 30 or so cows, and it was in a huge pole barn, and uh, which was probably the ceilings were, probably 20, 25 feet high, huge poles. Mm -hmm. And it was really wide open so the cows could run and the bulls could run loose among the cows because at that time we didn't have artificial insemination. So that's why we had bulls running. And we were dehorning the bulls, but some of them still had a full set of horns. So while I was going out bringing these cows in, I heard a noise behind me. Now I had rubber boots on, rubber pants on, the floors were just covered with cow manure and oh, just silent that it was a mess. And so, but I heard this noise behind me and I turned around this 2,500 pound Holstein bull was mm. on a dead run for me. Jeez. And so I was, I was like, okay, how am I going to get away from this guy? So I saw a feeder bin and I thought if I could jump in that feeder bin, he couldn't get his head at me. Mm-hmm. So I go to run for the feeder bin. When I did, I tripped. And when I get up, this huge pole was in front of me. And as soon as I stood up, that bull put Mm. his head right right into my back behind my shoulder blades and the bottom of my neck. Mm. He just drove me into the pole and it crushed my chest, crushed my face into the pole. And then I fell back and that bull just kept on hooking me Mm. again and again and throwing me up. I could hear my clothes ripping, my Mm. flesh was ripping. And uh, um, I think I got thrown in the air probably at least seven or eight times. Jeez. And they cleaned blood off the walls at least nine feet in the air. Mm. So it was quite a thing. But while this was going on, I came out of my body. And I'm up there in the rafters, and I'm looking down, and I'm watching this bull just grind my face right into the ground. Mm. And he was just mauling me. And then all of a sudden, Stephen, I heard these words come out of my mouth, Lord, spare my life. Wow. And as soon as I said that, that bull stopped immediately. Mm. I clicked down to the other end of the barn, and the Lord gave me enough strength to get up and to walk over to the gate, open it up, and step outside. Wow. And as soon as that happened, my partner came out, and he said, what happened to your leg? And I looked down, and I had a big hole. My hip was gored open. You could put two fists Mm. inside my and I pretty much had bled out, and uh, it, it was crazy. I, and so we couldn't even wait for an ambulance. They had to, the guy put me on a station wagon in the, in the, on the passenger side the front seat, and it was the most horrible, painful ride I'd ever been in. 
and trying to get to the hospital mm. in Dover Foxcroft. I'm out in the middle of the country, probably 20 miles away from the hospital. Wow. Whatever. But here, here's something that is kind of humorous in a way. Uh, but what, what was weird about this was Nancy's reading this book about people having out-of-body experiences mm-hmm. and going to heaven. And she was, I mean, people were seeing the, the streets of gold, meeting Jesus and all this stuff. And I, while she was saying that, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I got ripped off. <laughs> I believe I had a experience. I really did. I, I believe I died while I was there and I came out of my body. But the thing is, is I tell people I got ripped off because I never left the body. You know? <laughs> I'm hanging around the rafters, you know, and I'm thinking, man, I didn't even here I have all of this. I didn't even get to heaven, you know. I just I didn't even leave the barn. <laughs> to use that as a little bit of humor. Yeah. So out of that, Stephen my sternum was cracked in three places. Mm. My hip was gored open. I got a horn on the inside of my right leg. I got a horn towards skin out from underneath my neck. It didn't penetrate it. And I got a horn across my uh, my right eye. Mm. And most of my ribs in the front and the back were cracked or broken. Mm. It was, uh, I mean, I couldn't even use crutches. My torso was so broken up. But I was a year, I was a year recovering. And I would just like... <clears throat> like that just do a little cough mm-hmm. like that, and it was extreme mm. pain but it's like what you said you know what earlier when you were talking about how god could take somebody out of their past yes and what happens in their past and give them a testimony for the future mm-hmm. and this me being in this pain for a year gave me so much compassion for people with pain in their body, that that experience, even as negative and as hurtful and painful as it was, became a, an incredible milestone, an incredible catalyst mm-hmm. to bring me into the healing ministry today. Amen. You know, because I have so much compassion. You know, the scripture says Jesus was moved with compassion. Mm-hmm. Well, I am moved with compassion for people with pain in their body. And that was a major launching for me it was a major catalyst uh for for myself and for nancy to move into the uh to the healing ministry Amen. i ended up uh going back to school finishing up bible college and and then um uh, and then actually planting i planted a church in brewer maine mm-hmm. and we uh you know we pastored that church for uh, six years before we turned it over to someone else and left and went into cameron uh, before I talk about churches, is there any any thoughts or anything you want to ask me thus far? No, you're rolling right along pretty good. You've been doing this for a lot of time, a long, long time, over thirty <laughs> okay. years. <laughs> You've been right. in ministry, so this is good. Right. So, um, so anyway, um, yeah, we pastored in Brewer, Maine, for six years. Did tent meetings every year. We had property out on Wilson Street in Brewer, and we were seeing a lot of miracles. We had people coming in from Canada Mm. to get healings. There was a guy that came one time to one of our meetings in Brewer, and he brought his wife. She was on a cot. He had a a suburban vehicle, Mm -hmm. which was a pretty big vehicle, and he put her in a cot in the back and brought her all the way from Canada to the meeting, and she ended up getting healed. Wow. In that meeting, so that goes way back to the uh, to the mid '80s uh, when this stuff was happening, mm-hmm. and um, so then uh, we went. Nancy and I, we left there, ended up going into Cameron, Missouri, and uh, through that, we got involved with the Brownsville revival, and really started seeing the glory of God. Mm-hmm. We were doing like. Uh, five or six services a week. Wow. We were doing Tuesday night prayer, Wednesday night service, uh, Saturday night, two services Sunday morning, Sunday night, and people getting saved. We grew that that little church there in a town of 30, I think 3,800 people. Mm-hmm. We grew that church from 70 to 400 in probably wow. in about a year and a half. Mm. And so we've always been in this revival mode. Mm-hmm. Of uh, when I say revival mode, it's like being so dependent on the Holy Spirit. You know, we think about being poor in spirit, having poverty of spirit. We're not talking about being poor physically, but we're talking about being so poor in ourselves that we are needy of Christ. We are so needy of the Word of God. And so that's how Nancy and I, 
we've lived our lives realizing no matter how long we've been in the healing ministry, Mm -hmm. no matter how long it's been deliverance or whatever it is, we are always in need of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, the Word of God, everything we do. And so uh, we've always recognized that. And one of the things you'll hear me say over and over again is that one one of the biggest things Nancy and I learned a long time ago is it's not about us and anything we do. Mm. We're just a host for God. Yes. And so being a host for God, we got to we got to keep ourselves available, mm-hmm. and we got to keep the hose as clean as possible. Amen. Keep the resistance out. It's like a conduit. We want to keep the resistance out so that the power can flow. But in Cameron. We saw incredible miracles, signs, and wonders, and we were there for four years. And then we were crying out and saying, Lord, we, we really feel like you want to give us a bigger city. So we went from Cameron to, to 3,800 to Lincoln, Nebraska, about 250,000 people. Wow. And that church had about 70. And we grew that from 70 to 400. Mm. And again, continually staying in the revival mode. Mm-hmm. And take doing a lot of missions trips. I've been in 36 nations, and when we go there, we're ministering to lepers. We're doing hit and crusades, planting churches. We we uh, laid a cornerstone for a Bible school um, in in India, and so uh, like I said, we we've, we've traveled the world. We're still traveling the world. We're planning on going to the Philippines in January for a month, Amen. and doing uh, work in several different places there. Uh, but it has been an exciting journey for Nancy and I mm. in ministry. And here we are, you know, we're seasoned now. We're in our 60s, past our mid-60s. And I don't think life could be any better than it is right now. That's awesome. We love what we're doing. Uh, we're excited about serving. The thing that in, in this minister's network, Stephen, and you've heard me say this, But it's not hierarchical. We don't ask people to promote us, to Mm. support us. We're here to serve these uh, ministers, these sons and daughters, to help them to step into their destiny and to walk in their God-given purpose. And so every day we get to do this. And so it's all about relationship, Mm -hmm. and it's not about tolerating people. It's about celebrating them. Yes. And one of, one of the neat things I heard the other day that um, uh, this one pastor at Gateway was preaching about how the disciples, they didn't recognize Jesus. Even when he walked through the wall, they didn't recognize him. <laughs> That's true. Because they were trying to recognize him according to the flesh mm. instead of the spirit. And that really spoke to wow. me. And it's like, you know what? When, I, when I'm working with these ministers, mm-hmm. I want to see them not according to their flesh, but according to their spirit and how Jesus sees them. And that is so powerful. Because, yes. you know, sometimes people can come into your life and they can be very fleshly. And it's like if we handle them at that level, mm-hmm. we may miss something really big that God's wanting to do in and through them. So I'm asking the Lord to really help me. Nancy and I, we're both asking the Lord to help us to begin to recognize these people according to their spirit and not according to their flesh. Amen. And that's talking about, yeah, and so now we're talking about the uh, Destiny Churches and Ministries International Apostolic Network, which is the ministry that you started. And uh, tell us about that, because that's an amazing ministry. Before you say anything, um, I've been blessed to be ordained into the ministry. And I can honestly say I've never experienced anything like it before in my life, Um, especially with the network. You know, the way you all offer support, mentorship, you know, it is. It's like, and whenever you have a question or, you know, I mentioned to uh, Dr. John that I'm, I need to dig in the word more, get some courses online. And next, you know, he tells me you need to connect with Glenn Blakeney. And that same day, I'm getting a message from, from Pastor Glenn Blakeney about, hey, John said I need to get in touch with you. And next thing you know, a day later, I'm in this ministry network of ministers all over the world getting trained and equipped and being mentored. And so this is an amazing network. So how did this all start? Well, um, 
I used to belong to a particular denomination, mm -hmm. and you know I'm not here to bash any right. anything like that. But what happened was in in this denomination, and in denominationalism in itself has a certain way they want to do things. Mm -hmm. They have certain uh, beliefs that that they want you to believe, and and of course most of those are absolutely incredible. But sometimes the policies almost carry the same value as scripture. Mm. And, um, and then some of this becomes political and just, there's a lot of things that go on there. And, um, and so they try to kind of get you to fit into their box. And if you're a forerunner and you're moving in a new wine skin and, um, uh, you're trying to, uh, uh, move out in fivefold ministry and uh, helping people to really get a kingdom mindset, really mm -hmm. understanding what what the kingdom of God uh, means, how to how to live according to kingdom principles, mm -hmm. which is basically Jesus is the king, and it's His ways and His desires. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people can make it pretty complicated, but it's simple. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Jesus is the king. And he wants to have rule, reign, dominion in, in you, in your mind, will, and emotions, in your thinking, your decision-making. And if we learn to submit to that, then what we're doing is we're, we are functioning as a citizen in the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. which is here on earth. It, it, you know, we have the kingdom of God and we have the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. And we make a choice every day who we're going to serve. And so, uh, so anyway, uh, when, when I belong to this particular denomination, it was very hard. It was very difficult. Um, you know, I wasn't being valued. Uh, they didn't value what I carried. And it wasn't just about me. Mm -hmm. It was about what the Lord was wanting me to do. Right. And I was running into all of these obstacles all the time. And so people would say to me, you know, John, you're, you're apostolic. You know, you've got this. And I'm, I pushed it away because it wasn't acceptable in the group that I was with. And so I didn't even really want to know much about it. So back in the um, late, late 90s, I began to read a little bit more about it, began to study it more. And the more I read the, the books about fivefold ministry, Apostolic Kingdom, the more I realized that's, me, that's mm -hmm. in me, that's a part of my life, that's my destiny, that's my future. Mm -hmm. And so um, I ended up getting connected with this, with this guy named John Kelly, Apostle John Kelly, he started International Coalition of Apostolic Leaders um, back in the uh, probably late 70s, early 80s, somewhere around there. Actually, no, it was it was uh, further down. It was probably around 2000 mm -hmm. that he started that. And so, uh, so I became a part of that. And then uh, Apostle Kelly spoke to me one day. He says, you know, John, you got a lot of people that look to you. And it would be good for you to have some type of ministers network or something nice. where like-minded people could come around you. So back in 2004, I started uh, Destiny Church and Ministries International. And, um, and it's basically grown organically. Mm. But there's two main pillars, two main things in this network that I made a decision. Number one, it was going to be relational and not positional. Yes. And so there's, it's not hierarchy. Nancy and I, we serve. Glenn Blakeney serves. We're here to serve the men and women of God that come into this network. We're not asking them to serve us. We're not asking them to tithe. We're not asking them to pay dues. Yeah, we, we ask them to sow into the ministry. Uh, but, uh, but the neat thing about it is is that this ministry, every bit of money that comes into this, this ministry, this network, goes right back out. Because right. Nancy, God has blessed us with passive income that where we don't need money from ministry for our own personal income. Mm -hmm. So that that works very well for us. But 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 the key to Destiny Church Ministries International is it's relational, not positional, mm -hmm. and we celebrate, not tolerate. Wow. Those are two things that is it's before me all the time mm. to make sure. That that's what we want to do. We want to help people. Some apostolic networks, Stephen, are, it's all about the apostle. 
And it's all about all of these sons and daughters helping him to achieve his dream. Right. And apostles are supposed to be there as any kind of leader should always be there to want to help their sons and daughters step into their inheritance, helping them to achieve their destiny mm -hmm. and to discover and walk in their God-given purpose. And that's what we do. And so this is not about us. What's awesome is we have over 160 ministers, and we have people right now wow. that have applications in and, and want to become a part of this, but it's really grown organically. We don't recruit. Uh, we have people talk to us about this, and, and uh, but it's, it's grown organically, and that's what we like about it. Mm -hmm. And I would say... In all the years that we've been around, we've only had maybe one or two couples uh, leave the network, and and that was because there were some major issues in their life personally that they weren't willing to um, walk in correction in those things. But it, we have people from all walks of life. What's amazing is that we have we have pastors that pastor churches. We have uh, leaders. I say pastors. We have fivefold ministers. Mm -hmm. the, the Teachers, there's evangelists, apostles, prophets, um, uh, and pastors all in this network. They're they're overseeing human trafficking ministries. Wow. They're missionaries in different countries. They oversee large networks themselves. Uh, they have healing rooms. They do podcasts. They do <laughs> all kinds of stuff. I mean, yes. every one of these ministries is so valuable. Mm. They're valuable because they're getting a message out. There's a guy I know that does podcasts. He's over in uh, the Philippines a lot. You yeah. might know because, <laughs> you know, but you know, uh, I mean, my goodness, this is what it's all about. Yeah. It's about get, getting the gospel of the kingdom out mm -hmm. to where people are getting saved, yes. seeing miracles, signs, wonders, healing, deliverance, and empowerment. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. Discipleship. Yes, absolutely. You know, it, uh, it, it's, it blew my mind. You know, it's unheard of when you have someone tell you, hey, listen, we're here for you. We're here to help you get to where God called you to be. No strings attached. Right. And it's, it's and you've been powerful. A part for, I mean, even before you even became a part of the network, right. we were reaching out to you, helping you in any way we could. Mm -hmm. Because that's we're about that's our dna yeah it's uh serving yeah and we love it i mean there's no and there's not a lot of drama when it comes to serving others mm -hmm. I mean, it's not about you so it's hard to get offended <laughs> when it's not about you that's true so, yeah so that's it that's exciting and and glenn and i we're working on uh some pretty major things helping an another part of the network there's several that are overseeing uh apostolic equipping centers, mm -hmm. you know, and I just got off the, the phone with a, a pastor yesterday in Pennsylvania. He wants to take a, his church for discipling and equipping and turn it into an apostolic equipping center Nice for training and, and equipping and, mm -hmm. you know, leadership, the Holy Spirit, deliverance, uh, healing, you know, miracle signs and wonders, um, kingdom mindset, those things like that. Certainly, you know, the study of the the, uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament, minor prophets, all the basic core things and understanding God's Word. Mm -hmm. But lots of times people get that, but they really don't know how to function yes. in Bible ministry. They don't know how to declare. Some of them can declare God's Word, but they haven't moved into demonstrating mm. God's Word. And so we want them to operate with the full package Nice. That it speaks of in the book of Acts. Yeah, that's awesome. And especially in 2021, whatever year you're going to be listening to this in, it uh, it's definitely needed now more than ever. You know, this, Absolutely. this whole Absolutely. pandemic was a wake-up call, I believe. We've got to stop. We realize that a lot of chairs are bolted down. We don't have to hold the seats down anymore. In the I, I believe, <laughs> yeah, I believe we, we have really stepped into the next great awakening. Yep. We're starting to see that. Mm -hmm. You know, I talked to a pastor the other day. We're, we're helping a pastor launch a church in Lakeland, Florida. And I was talking to him. And, um, you know, he has 
what what people would call the Midas touch. You know, seems like everything he touches, it grows. He's a, he's a great entrepreneur. He's built great businesses and all of that. Mm-hmm. But what's happened is, uh, man, the Holy Spirit's got a hold of this guy, and it's like he is so overwhelmed with the visitations mm. of the Holy Spirit that there's this fire that's igniting within him, and the business side of things is not a priority anymore, wow. even though God knows that he has gifted him. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you may, you may still have the Midas touch, but you might be moving into the pyromaniac touch. <laughs> fire, fire, and fire. Be, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people, Stephen, including yourself, that have these revival fire embers burning inside of them mm. so hot that when they begin to reach out and touch or do a podcast or something, all mm. of a sudden there's this spontaneous combustion wow. of these revival fires breaking out, healing, miracle signs, wonders, and uh, these things happening. Why? Because they've been carrying this inside of them. And now for such a time as this, mm. we are going to begin to see this you know, uh, what, what's amazing is I heard uh, someone prophesy a while ago that God God is taking the Ishmaels and removing them from their platform and raising up the Isaacs. Amen. And I believe the Isaacs have been the people behind the scenes. They're, they would be considered nobodies, mm. you know, you or me or whatever that's kind of been hidden behind the scenes. Yep. And now God is beginning to give a platform because of the integrity, the character, and and the desire to just yield and want, want God to flow in and through them. And now he's giving them a platform, mm-hmm. whether it's clear around the world or across the street. You know, uh, we've learned to leverage social media and do these things mm-hmm. where, I mean, you're, you're ministering in the Philippines and people are getting saved, healed, delivered, and set free. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. Yeah, That's sir. powerful. You know? And so a lot of people are like, well, I don't have a ministry. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. Just listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will speak to you and will help you to begin to move out and take advantage of, first of all, your testimony. Yes. You know, I tell people that if you can take some of the things you've gone through mm-hmm. and take two minutes, write it down, take two <laughs> minutes. Uh, this is what I was going through. This is the hell I was going through. Mm. And then take two minutes on how God came into your life and brought an incredible uh, change. You had an incredible encounter with him. Spend two minutes with that. And then spend two minutes with what he's doing in your life today. Amen. And you have testimonies in the financial area, in your marriage, Mm -hmm. in healing, your business, your spiritual life. Say you have four or five of those testimonies. When you come into contact with someone and they start talking about their struggle and finances or their marriage or whatever, all of a sudden you have got a testimony yep. that you can share that's going to be attractive to that person mm. and they're going to want that change in their life because you have a personal experience yourself. Amen. That's the truth. That's exciting. It is exciting. You know, I do that all the time, you know, yep. uh, from, from healings, you know. It, here, here's here's a, an amazing thing that some people don't understand. You know, people may have incredible needs in their life, so they made a choice. Uh, while while I have a need in my life, I can't effectively minister. Well, that's not true. That's right. Or they may be going through something physical in their life, mm-hmm. and they're thinking, "Well, how can God how can God use me mm. to minister to someone else when I've got." all of this stuff going on in my own life. Yeah. Well, you know, I got attacked by that bull, but also I got hurt in the Air Force on a C-130, hurt my back pretty bad, and ended up three years ago, I had a spinal fusion, had a cage and rods put in my back. But I was, for years, I was in Miami, different places, and laying hands on people, uh, and had excruciating pain mm. in my back. Going through that, I was on painkillers, I was on all kinds of stuff. And here I am, I'm ministering in Miracle Signs and Wonders, especially in the area of pain. Mm -hmm. And here's how bad it got, Stephen. I'm in Miami, and uh, the pain got so bad, I was breaking out in sweats. Uh, I was getting shaky. I had to put a piece of candy in my mouth because I think it was 
messing with my sugar or something. I don't have diabetes. I don't have any of those issues, but it was really messing with me. Mm-hmm. So I, had, I said to the pastor, I said, you know, you remember how Oral Roberts used to minister and he would sit down in a chair and he would lay hands on people. Can you give me a chair? And the pastor's like, Oh wow, that's awesome. He, <laughs> he didn't know. I didn't want to mess with people's faith. Right. So I never told people, but I sit down in that chair. I'm telling you something. People were getting out of wheelchairs. Mm. The growth is as big as a grapefruit on a woman's uh, back or her shoulder. It totally dissolved. Praise God. I mean, bones coming together, amazing miracles. Mm. So uh, years ago, actually probably about four years ago, I also had some rotator cuff problems. And I was getting surgery on my uh, left shoulder and... Uh, uh, you know, so I had a muscle torn off and some other things that were going on in there. So the doctor, the the uh, the surgeon was in the middle of doing this surgery and he fell out on the floor. He passed out. Oh, wow. Uh, he had had some, um, uh, you know, he'd had a cold. He was dealing with some sinus issues and I guess he hadn't eaten enough that day. Mm-hmm. They thought he had a heart attack. But what happened was they couldn't finish the surgery. And I had one screw in a muscle. They were trying to screw, put four screws in to screw the muscle to a bone. And so they had to unscrew that and let the muscle go. Mm. So I'm, I'm running around for a month or two before I can get rescheduled back in with one muscle completely Gee. off. And so I had quite a bit of pain. And also uh, I was dealing with, uh, was still dealing with a lot of pain in my back. So I'm preaching in Dallas and I'm really seeking the Lord. Okay, what do I preach on? And I heard the Lord say, I want you to preach a message on giving out of your own need mm. and ministering out of your own pain. And I'm like, okay. So I put this message together. Here I am. I'm in Dallas preaching. I got a muscle torn off. And I told the people right there, I said, I'm telling you right now, I am in a lot of pain in my shoulder. But I'm telling you what God's going to do today. He's going to minister healing to you and to your bodies. And we're going to see some amazing things happen. So I preached the message, gave the altar call. Probably at least 25 people came forward. Every one of them got healed instantly. Wow. It was absolutely incredible. And I was ministering uh, out of my own pain. I say my own pain. I, I never claim pain as right. mine. We know what you mean. You know? yeah. And I never accepted that as my lot. Mm-hmm. But I tell you this as I sit here today I'm not on any pain medication mm. uh, I'm doing well I'm healthy my blood pressure I mean I'm 67 years old I'm probably in better shape than I have been in for 30 40 years amen you're it's looking incredible. good you're looking good and so yeah like your point is don't uh, disqualify yourself because of your body because really, we're spirit. We're spirit, man. We've got our soul. Right. And uh, yeah, yeah. Because we've you all know, seen. You said a key word. Let, this that word you said disqualify. Mm-hmm. It it really popped in my spirit. Because when I pastored, I I used to be so frustrated because I'd say, "What's wrong with these people? Why don't they want to get involved in ministry? What's mm. what's going on?" I mean, I just couldn't figure it out. And, uh, you know, I just thought they were complacent, indifferent, whatever it might be. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, they've been disqualified. Mm. And I'm like, what? So I began to talk to the Lord about that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, there are pastors that have spoken into people's lives in a way that they felt disqualified. There are failures. There's people that's gone through a, a, a bankruptcy or a divorce or something in their life so they've allowed those failures to disqualify them Mm -hmm. or they've allowed the enemy to speak into their life or situations and uh so i want i I just want people that are listening today yes is this is that god's the one that qualifies you Mm -hmm. and he qualified you by the work that he did at calvary through his death burial and resurrection and so no matter what you've done in your past no matter where you're at no matter what your failures are, you turn those over, you give them to the Lord, and you walk in that new creation. Yes. You walk in that new identity. You step away from these failures and stuff, and if you will walk in the identity of Christ and know who you are in Christ, you're not going to have that struggle. 
The Apostle Paul in Romans 7 says, why do I find myself doing the things I don't want to do? Mm. Why can't I do what I want? And you know what? He gives the answer to that question in Romans 8 where he says, it's the Spirit of Christ in you. Yeah. And so when we come into that identity, we don't have to prove ourselves to anybody. When we're walking in the identity of Christ, when we're walking in his righteousness, mm -hmm. we don't have to justify anything because we have been justified. That's right. So it's exciting to, to learn that and to be able to walk in that. It becomes very, very powerful. So I want to encourage people. You know what? If you doubt yourself mm -hmm. and, and all of that, then what you're doing is you're making it all about you. And you're, you mm. are disqualifying the work that Christ did on Calvary for you. And you don't want to do that. That's so I right. want to encourage you to press in, listen to the Holy Spirit, and begin to ask him, what is my God-given purpose? Why do I exist? Mm -hmm. You know, I know I have a two-word purpose statement, Stephen, and you've heard me say this several times. Uh, for Nancy and I, we have one for ourselves personally, and we have one for the ministry, but this is how it would go. John Burpee, John and Nancy Burpee exist to serve others by empowering expectation. The Bridge to Destiny Ministries mm. or, or Destiny Church Ministries International, John Burpee Ministries exist to serve others by bridging destiny, yes. helping people get to the right people, the right resources, the right biblical principles. So I know every morning when I get out of bed, I have clarity of purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm intentional. And uh, it's exciting. Why? Because I know my purpose. I know why I exist. Amen. That's powerful. You know, I'm smiling because I was going to ask you, um, as we're wrapping up this episode, the, uh, I was going to ask you if you had any words of wisdom for our listeners, and you hit it right on the head. And I was just sitting here thinking it's amazing how the Holy Spirit puts things together because interviews like this just flow. And yeah. um, I know there's a lot of people excited. And one of the things I want to ask you for sure before we close, and I'm sure there's some people thinking, where can we listen to this guy some more? Because he's got some good stuff. So I know you've got your podcast equipment. You're going to be doing some podcasting soon? or I am. We're actually going to do – I have a webinar. I don't have the link yet. Okay. I'm doing a webinar mm -hmm. with Empower 2000 out of uh, Culpeper, Virginia. And through that webinar, it's going to be a free webinar. I don't have the link yet. It's okay. going to be doing it like uh, May 25th. Okay. But also, I'm pre-recording eight lessons mm -hmm. on out of the, the book that I've written. And, uh, and so people can go to the webinar, and then if they want to sign up for the lessons later, and what I can do is I can share that link a little bit later. But okay. If you go to johnburpee.com, I have several audio teachings on there. Nice. They're very, very cheap. I mean, it's like two or three bucks or yes. whatever. Yes, they're great also. courses. And, yeah, they're great. It's great teachings. There's several teachings that I've done on Facebook. So mm -hmm. you can go back to Facebook and look at the recordings. So I do have a YouTube site, but I haven't been loading up there. Uh, one thing about Glenn Blakeney is Glenn Scott has videos coming out all the time. Yes. Stuff. So he's challenging me on that. Mm -hmm. and so I do have the book, which I would encourage people to get. We'll probably talk about that in, in another podcast. Also, it's coming out in audio. Nice. And, uh, translated in Spanish. It's oh, wow. Translated in uh, Tamil. Tamil language from Tamanado, mm -hmm. India, a couple that there's 80 million people in Tamanado. Wow. So they're the people over there. We have, we have folks that are ordained in our network. They're medical doctors here in the States and they're from Tamanado and their parents said, we want to translate this. Praise for God. Tamanado. So that's exciting. Yes. So we'll be doing live and real soon. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing live healing meetings on Facebook Live, on Zoom, or, or, uh, StreamYard, whatever way we can do it, where we can start incorporating people. We've got this new app. I just developed this app called Milestones to the Miraculous app, where people can register, become part of this group of people, because this group of people is going to be mentored into 
uh, how to flow, how to receive miracle signs and wonders, but how to minister. And as I mentor them and raise them up, I'm going to start using them to personally minister healing. And then we're going to launch them out so they can start doing uh, live healing meetings uh, through podcasts, whatever way. Mm -hmm. You know, Stephen, I did a meeting several years ago through a Brazilian pastor that had a radio station called Spirit of Boston in Boston, Massachusetts. And I was doing live healing. And it was going all the way into Brazil. Wow. And people were calling in with pain in their body, with itching in their body, things like that. And I would speak to that. I would take authority, speak to that, command that pain, that itching, bones come together. Mm. And people clear across around the world were getting healed instantly. That's powerful. And, and use these venues. Yes. And I'm going to take advantage of it as much as I can. Mm-hmm. I'm going back on the road. I've got probably 12 or 14 meetings scheduled here in the next two or three months, all the way from, from here in this area into Kansas city and Nebraska, all the way up into Pennsylvania, Maine. Tennessee and then New England. I'm yeah. really excited about that. Yeah. That's but awesome. I love doing this right here too. These podcasts oh my gosh, are so yes. valuable. The Facebook live, mm-hmm. Zoom, Zoom live, all of these things are just great tools yes. to bring the kingdom of God to people that are number one there's a lot of people right now they've been disenchanted with the traditional church that yes. functions in this corporate religious spirit mm-hmm. and they want something fresh something new something that's really biblical and so we're able to offer this where we're teaching kingdom principles but we're not only teaching them you know when 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 you have fivefold teachers and ministers that are really helping to put this out it not only gives them information, but it brings them into the experience yes. of what they're reading in the book of Acts and, mm-hmm. and different epistles. They're, they're, they're experiencing it, and they're receiving transformation themselves. Amen. It's- That's great. Well, there, and by the way, he was mentioning his new book coming out, or it's already out, called Miles to the Miraculous. Enjoy the Journey. Awesome. It's going to be a great, it is a great book. I've already read it and uh, you can get it on Amazon, but we are going to be talking about in that in our next podcast together, which we're going to be recording here in a few minutes and it'll be coming out a week from now, so to speak. So I'm going to go ahead and have you pray, Dr. John. It's really been a blessing to have you on. You're a mighty man of God and I appreciate you. Well, thank you. It's a, it's a privilege. Uh, to be able to be on with you. Yes. And uh, so I thank you for, for inviting me. So, Lord, I thank you for this time. And we know that, um, Holy Spirit, you are not limited mm. geographically. There are people all around the world that will hear this podcast. Yes. All across the United States. You know exactly where they are. You know exactly what they need. And so I believe as they listen to this, there's going to be certain things that spark in their life, whether it's their God-given purpose, whether they need a miracle, whether they feel they've been disqualified and now they don't feel that way anymore. I just pray, Lord, that, that you, through the Holy Spirit, would just reach into the hearts of these men and women, even some of these young people that are listening to this, They've been praying and saying, Lord, I need something different. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they begin to hear this. They begin to hear the voices of Stephen Lewis and John Berkeley Mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that really resonates. It's not just the voices, but it's what those voices are saying, what those voices are carrying, the message of the kingdom of God, bringing hope and, and bringing, um, just a, a, a whole new perspective on things that they've not heard of before or not heard of in a long time. So, Lord, I pray that these seeds that are being planted and the watering that's being done today will produce incredible fruit around the world. Mm-hmm. And I thank you for, for Stephen and for Barbara and their family, Lord, and I just speak a blessing over them, and I just speak this stuff forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, there you have it, folks. Great episode. Such an honor and a blessing to have Dr. John on today. Thank you once again, Dr. John. And uh, 
appreciate you folks. I'm going to put some contact information in the show notes as well as on the screen of the slideshow. And with that being said, hey, make sure you share this with your friends, share it with your families, anybody you know that would be interested in checking this out. I want you folks to get connected with Dr. John. Great ministry, powerful, powerful ministry. With that being said, hey, thank you all for tuning in. God bless you all. Take care of yourselves. Love you. Peace.